Okay, so let's start. Welcome to the today's Ocarino webinar on the topics of the integration of configuration management tools inside Ocarino. So during the uh, webinar, please feel free to um, ask questions either in the chat or in the question and answers tool, and I will try to answer them at the end of the webinar. And in case you miss something, um, I think the recording will be then available on YouTube in a few days. So let me start um, why you want to use a tool such as Ocarino and what Ocarino really is. So Ocarino is a tool um, for orchestration. So this is where also the name comes from. And orchestration means that basically you, you don't want to do every step in a manual way, but you want to automate things. And especially if you have certain things in your infrastructure, like uh, the provisioning of new machines or the configuration of machines, the patching, um, and you have a lot of servers, it is really a time consuming task to automate, uh, to, to do this uh, manually. So this is a, a workflow you want to automate as far as possible. And Ocarino is a tool which can help you exactly with those kind of tasks. There's, for one thing, the deployment or the provisioning. So the creation of new machines, may it be a virtual machine, a cloud instance, or a bare metal server. The Ocarino can take care of that and create a new virtual machine for you, install an operating system on that um, so that you can use it. And if you want to install your operating system on it, you would want also configure it. And this is more or less the, the, the main topic we will uh, talk about today. So the integration of configuration management. And there we have three different candidates to uh, integrate, um, which can be used even without Ocarino, but uh, the advantage of Ocarino is that you can combine it with other workflows already. And there is Ansible, Puppet, and SolStack. They have slightly different, uh, different approaches on configuration management. Um, so if you never heard of them, the idea of all those configuration management tools is to have um, the configuration as code with a central source of truth, which will configure certain groups, all hosts, or just specific hosts or applications. And uh, there are differences how they do that. So the, the code itself um, has some differences in the structure and uh, how you define things. But in the end, the goal is always to have it readable for someone who is familiar with a configuration of Linux applications or operating systems. Um, the other main difference is that uh, the, the, the connection and how the configuration comes to the hosts. So Ansible, for example, is a tool which is uh, based on Python and uses SSH as a connection. So basically, every time you run Ansible on a certain number of hosts, it will open SSH connections to all those hosts um, of your inventory, so your targets, and uh, copy Python scripts to them and run them. Ansible is also great to uh, talk to APIs because there are already predefined modules which can take over the, the whole structure of the API command so that you only have to fill in variables. Puppet on the other side is a client agent uh, based system. So that means on all hosts you want to configure, you have to install a Puppet agent, which regularly checks in at the Puppet server, so a central server, which maintains all 
the information how machines should be configured. And every time the Puppet agent connects to the Puppet server, it will forward information what server is it is, and the Puppet server will answer with a catalog of configuration which should be present on the machine. And then the agent will take care to um, configure everything as described in that catalog and will generate a report where it has changed something. And in all cases where no change was needed, those steps are skipped. This is basically uh, the same way how Ansible does it, but Ansible does not regularly run, but you trigger, now I want to configure a certain set of machines. And then there's salt stack, which is more or less a mix of both because you can have it with an agent. So um, you can have the same approach or a similar approach as Puppet so that it regularly checks with a central server how the machines should be configured. But it is also offered to use uh, Salt via SSH, so in the same way like Ansible does. There are some other differences, but uh, I think they are not that important for the current uh, scenario. The other things which Ocarino can take care of is the whole patch management. So it supports like all main distributions of Linux, which are out there in data centers. So that the Ocarino can act as a repository mirror for all those repository types and operating systems with an integration that the Ocarino knows which packages are installed, which packages are available for that system. And it will tell you if you have upgrades available. After you upgrade it, it can tell you that certain services or the machine needs a restart so that you have a way to manage uh, the, the packages of many hosts. And on the other side, there's a release management, which means that those repositories you maintain for your different environments, operating systems are frozen so that you have a, a fixed state of those repositories and packages. And you can decide which version you want to make available in different environments. That means usually your development environment will have most recent packages available. And if you go to the testing phase, you will use the same package versions which were used for the development to ensure that you ha don't have dependency conflicts and that it's working stable. And then you will also only provide those stable environments for your production environment because then you know those packages and those package versions are tested so that you have the most stable version available in your production. That means in the end, uh, Ocarino is a tool for lifecycle management. So we have those three pillars, which is uh, which are the base of Ocarino, which is provisioning new hosts. So the creation of new hosts and the installation of the operating system, the management of patches and releases. So which repositories and packages are available in, and in which environment, and also the configuration management. So the uh, possibility to configure applications or operating system configurations with the advantage that you have one central source of truth where you can change those con configurations as well. And then you usually don't want to use uh, always like the, the same configuration for all hosts, but maybe just for a certain operating system or just for one certain host group or just one certain host. So that means in total, um, we as ATIX provide Ocarino a, as a tool, um, which has many integrations for different operating systems. It will leave you the choice which kind of configuration management you want to use what hypervisor you use for your virtual machines in your own data center. If you want to run and configure um, cloud instances, for example, on Azure or AWS or Google. And you can also have uh, bare metal servers. And around that, 
we will provide, uh, we have different departments uh, and different topics. So we will help you to integrate that solution in your environment with our consulting department. We can give you trainings that you learn how to use Ocarina in, a best, in the best way. And this can be also customized for your environment. We will have support. So if you have any issues, if you find a bug, you can open a ticket and we will try to help you and try to solve the problem as soon as possible. And to improve things and to fix bug, we have also an engineering department. And this can also help you because we can also create custom plugins if you need one. So then let's jump directly into an Ocarino demo so that I can show you how the integration of Puppet, Solstack, and Ansible can work with Ocarino. And I will keep that rather simple so we don't have complicated um, configurations we want to manage today. As you can see on our demo system, we have like all different operating systems, Alma Linux, Debian, Oracle Linux, Red Hat. And to show you that uh, the advantage is that you can uh, the, have the integration in Ocarino, the easiest thing is to show that, that if you create a new host, you can select a host group, which is more or less depending on your use case. So in our demo case, it's showing off, we can provide every operating system. And um, then we can also combine that with the configuration of certain applications or other things. So as you can see, there's already the configuration for salt, for Ansible and for Puppet available. And you have different modules which can be included or um, already configured to run directly after the installation of the operating system. So as I said before, Ansible is something you need to trigger that it configures things or changes a configuration. So if you have Ansible roles already available on your Ocarino and select them during um, the creation of hosts after the installation of the operating system, those roles are already um, run on the host. So everything it will be configured at least once directly after the installation. On the other side, you have salt states, which is more or less the same as roles or Puppet modules, which is also the corresponding part for Puppet. And you can select that, for example, I want this host to become a Docker host. So I want to have Docker already installed. I will also to maintain my SSH configuration. So I can include those kind of modules and roles and Ocarino will make sure that everything will be configured correctly directly after the installation of the operating system. And as Salt and Puppet will run regularly by default, even if you change something afterwards, those changes will be performed right after the agent will communicate with the Ocarino the next time, which is by default every 30 minutes. So the advantage is you select a host group, which is more or less a template, and this can already include certain configurations of those uh, configuration management tools. Then depending on your infrastructure, maybe you have to decide in which subnet I want to place that. Maybe I need also adjust some other things, but in the easiest way, you have just to define some cool name for your host, or maybe you have a naming scheme then you submit the host. And in this case, it will create a new virtual machine instance inside my VMware cluster. It will set DHCP, DNS entries. It will prepare everything for TFTP and it will start a network-based installation. There are different installation mechanisms. These were topic of the last webinar. And now we want to focus on the configuration part. If we look on the host page, so all hosts we already uh, have in, uh, available in our demo system, you can see that I already pre prepared three hosts for today. 
I named one Ansible, one Puppet and one Salt for the different configuration management tools. And I also chose like randomly which operating systems they have, but they have different ones. So let's start with Ansible. Here we have the webinar Ansible host, and we can already see there is the information that this host is out of sync. So depending on which uh, configuration management tool and the configuration of your Ocarino, it can warn you that this, that host hasn't uh, communicated with Ocarino in the last 30 minutes. So maybe the host is offline or you have some bad configuration there. Since Ansible does not run regularly, this is expected. And um, as I said, I want to maintain uh, now an easy configuration for those hosts. So we will just have a look at the one file we want to manage. In this case, it's the message of the day. So if we have a look at the message of the day file, which is basically just some information, we see that currently it says, welcome to webinar Ansible and so on. And the thing is, I can configure that with Ansible. To show you that this will change, we will watch that file. And it will be updated every three seconds. And now I can schedule to run Ansible on that host from the Ocarino. And in this case, it will just apply a certain template to that message of the day file, and it will change that. So this will now open an SSH connection to the host. And now it changed it to that cool dinosaur, which says this host is managed by Ocarino with Ansible, and this is in German. And um, as you are familiar, if you are familiar with Ansible, I can also see the output uh, of that Ansible run right here inside the Ocarino. On the other side, if I go to that host, I will now see that the configuration is active, so it's not out of sync anymore. I can also see there are reports, so I can see if that host was configured and if changes were applied. So for example, there were changes applied by SaltStack and by Ansible for that host. And if you're familiar with any configuration management tool, you know that there are facts for hosts which describe um, certain parameters like the network configuration, the operating system, and those kind of information are also included in Ocarino and are updated. But now I said the Ocarino can be the central source of, source of truth. So maybe we want to change something. And for Ansible, there is the scenario where I can have different roles and I already filtered for the message of the day. And there are different variables, for example, the template and the message itself. So basically what is inside that string. And um, for all those variables, I can have a global default. That global default in this case is that cool template of a dinosaur. And then you can have matches. Those matches can override the global default and have a hierarchy. That hierarchy can, can be defined here. And those can be like on domain level, operating system level, host group level, or for that host itself. So let's do it for that host itself. So let's call it the FQDN for webinar ansible.demo.atix. And let's use that same template that we use for CentOS 7. So we add a new matcher, which is the highest in the hierarchy. So it will always override the default and also other values which are set for operating system level or host group level. And if I now go to my host again and schedule a new Ansible run, that dinosaur will change to an Ocarino. 
So let's wait a few seconds. In the meantime, there's also the question if we can manage which facts are collected for the host. Basically, um, all facts are collected, which are available. And in Ocarino, you can filter out which uh, facts are not saved. So even if you set custom facts in your Ansible playbook or in your Puppet module, they are imported in Ocarino as long as you don't uh, filter them out to be stored there. So now we see there's some Ocarino and the message has not changed. So then let's do the same thing with Puppet. So for Puppet, we can already see there were no changes in the last configuration run. And in this case, if we look at the reports, we can see that every 30 minutes, Puppet checks in if there is a change. And here we see there was a change already. So let's switch to that host and basically do the same thing so that it is comparable. Uh, three. So in this case, uh, there is a message of the day and it just says message of the day created by Puppet. So it's not a fancy template like we have seen in Ansible. And the other thing is that if we now change that parameter, if we wait for eight more minutes, it will automatically change. But on the other side, uh, since we are in a webinar, we don't want to wait for that long. So let's create a matcher. And in this case, let's do a matcher on the operating system. So let's check which operating system is used. And basically that matcher uses the facts for the operating system. So we see this is Red Hat 8. So let's match on Red Hat. 8.8 .8 .8 because I know that this already has the minor version Red Hat 8. And let's put in another string like Ocarino is the best tool to rule them all. Very long message. So now we could wait for the next configuration run, which is in around eight minutes, or we could say, yeah, let's connect to that and trigger that Puppet agent run immediately. So the advantage is for Puppet, if you change your, your variables, you don't necessarily have to trigger the change because you know that at least after the in the next 30 minutes, every host affected by the change of a variable will have that change. So you only have to trigger it if you know that you cannot wait for maximum 30 minutes. And now we see that it shows you Ocarino is the best tool to rule them all. So basically we have the same mechanism like for Ansible for Puppet as well. And surprise, it's the same mechanism to configure things with SaltStack. So for SaltStack, we see this is also currently out of sync. And if we check for the message of the day here. This says, welcome to hostname powered by ATIX, then some stats of the server. So basically the same thing we saw on the Ansible host before. And um, in this case, the message of the day variable we have uh, imported in Ocarino is just the vendor name. So this where it states ATIX. So now we could add another matcher. Let's take the OS again. In this case, we have slash 15 SP5. And now we could say the vendor is not ATIX, the vendor is Ocarino. And basically, uh, we have the same matching mechanism like we had before. And I could also say, I do not want to wait for the next salt run and I can trigger it immediately. So then we see that this ATIX will change to Ocarino. And 
Now, this is just a very simple uh, example how you can manage configuration files. And those configuration management tools can also install packages, restart services, and create much more. But um, just to show you that those kind of simple changes, which are inside a variable, can be easily distributed on one or more machines. Um, we can see that this is really easy. And now it changed to Ocarino. So it will generate also the report and then this run will be successful. And the other thing is now, now I did everything just for one single machine, but maybe I want to change all of them. And usually I don't use three different um, mechanisms of configuration, so different tools, but just one. So I could say, I want to have Ansible run on all three of them because I want to change them all. So what we now see is that it will change again. And then we will see that those are the Ansible templates again with the dinosaur or the Ocarino. And let's check which of those servers. So here we see on SolStack, we have that cool dinosaur. For Red Hat, it's a cool dragon. And for that one, it's still the Reno because in this case, nothing changed. And what we can see now is uh, we, we have the, the reporting of all those runs inside the Ocarino. So we can see there was an Ansible. And in this case, it's also filtered for only those runs where we have events. So if we skip that filter, we can see that there were three Ansible runs, but one didn't have any change. And this is exactly this one. So we can see at which time something changed on our host. So if we check for that report, it will tell you that the template was changed to the Stegosaurus template for message of the day. Then it also gathered the facts, but there were no new facts and it applied the roles. So it's basically all those tasks I have inside Ansible in form of a report. The same thing I can have for Puppet and for SaltStack. So for example, if we check that Puppet report, we can see that it installed the, the crony D and uh, ensured that the service is running and it was changed from stopped. And this is not one of our webinar demo hosts, but just a normal one. So that means I can have the configuration and usually I just use one configuration management tool for in my environment and not three of them, even if it is possible to combine them, then you have to make sure that you don't manage the same configuration file with different tools because then it can create conflicts. But I have the information also inside Ocarino, how my variables are configured, which hosts uh, are using which configuration modules. I will have reports which show you if something has changed and what has changed. I also have the facts and I can see at which time they were updated for the last time and from which source they came. So for example, if I filter for the newest change, we will have um, the facts in this case for the Ansible interfaces, the kernel release, and the thing which always changes is the uptime in seconds. So I get a lot of information already from those facts, and those can be used in other things as well. And some of them change over time. So I can also show that, uh, have a look at them in a distribution chart. But uh, I don't know if this is something interesting in this case for the uptime in seconds. So this is how you can use the configuration management tools inside uh, Ocarino. And um, so you have the advantage 
every time you create a new host, it can be fully configured, or at least the base configuration can already be provided by Ocarino. And during the whole lifetime of a server, you can just change certain variables inside Ocarino and automatically the hosts will get those changes within the next half an hour. And just as an outlook, there are also more complex integrations available. For example, we have a plugin which is called application-centric deployment, which is also based on Ansible. So that means I can import um, a playbook, an Ansible playbook for certain applications, which consists of a cluster for, for cluster applications. For example, a Kubernetes cluster. I can define them and then I can create application instances I already prepared one uh, for Kubernetes. And in this case, you could just apply, exist, uh, apply that to existing hosts or you define new hosts, which are not um, created yet. And depending on that application, I could have something like it. I have to have at least one bootstrap node I can have additional control nodes for my control plane of Kubernetes and I have some worker nodes and maybe I already want to have a load balancer in place with an uh, HIR proxy. And in this case, um, I have also Ansible variables inside which I can configure and I can match them already with some templates. And the advantage now is for that Kubernetes cluster, I, which is already defined, I can select I want to deploy that application. And what Ocarino will now do is it will create all those new hosts. So if we have a look at the host list again, those three uh, five hosts are newly created. And it's the same mechanism we, we used for the previous uh, demo host where we used Oracle Linux 9. So we will see uh, new hosts popping up here in a few seconds. And after all of those hosts have their installation uh, finished of operating system and the post installation configuration, and maybe even the, the first puppet runs or the first uh, Ansible runs, after everything has finished, a new Ansible run will be triggered with exactly that configured Ansible playbook, which in this case will set up a whole Kubernetes cluster. So it will have the bootstrap node, which will install the base of Kubernetes, and then it will add all those other um, hosts to build a whole Kubernetes cluster where, depending on my Ansible playbook, I can start to run my container loads on. In most cases, this is something which you usually don't do that often to deploy new Kubernetes clusters, but for development and testing environments, that might be useful. And in other cases, you might have other applications which run in a clustered mode so that you can have something where you can already deploy them cluster-wise instead of having single nodes, configure them, and then connect them together. Then there are also some other diff different possibilities also for the Ansible integration, just for remote management and uh, ad hoc commands. But in general, there's, uh, there are a lot of possibilities to maintain the configuration of your hosts without having to open an SSH connection directly from a shell, but you can manage everything from the web interface of Ocarino or you can also use the REST API of Ocarino to do that, for example, with, an oper uh, with a configuration management tool, because there are also Ansible modules available to do everything inside Ocarino with Ansible again. But this is another topic. And with that, I come to the end of this webinar. So thank you for your attention, and I will stay for a few mi more minutes if you have any additional questions so that I can try to answer them.
So there's one question, if I can show how to filter the, the Ansible facts. Um, basically, there's nothing just for Ansible, but in the Ocarino settings, there's the possibility to maintain an array, which um, facts or patterns of facts are already uh, ignored to be stored. And in this case, uh, you can see that there are some some facts which are uh, mainly connected to like uh, bridges and virtual interfaces from Docker and uh, facts which change in every run, which are ignored and not stored inside Ocarino. But in this case, you can um, add more facts you don't want to be stored there. And uh, the other thing is that there are different things you can do with the facts. So you could also automatically manage the assigned operating system to your hosts or the fact uh, the domain by the information which comes from those facts. So in this case, if you deploy a machine or you have a machine with Red Hat 8.6, and at some point you update it to Red Hat 8.8. .8. If you do not ignore the fact, it will automatically show up that this host is now a Red Hat 8.8. .8. Depending on the operating system, this is also with more information because it can also include more than just the minor version and also the uh, release of the build so that you end up with many different operating system names inside Ocarino. This is why in our demo case, we ignore that. And the mechanism behind all those facts is basically the same um, for each source. So um, those settings uh, affect the facts from Sol stack, from Puppet, from Ansible, and also from the subscription manager, which is used to connect to the repositories from Ocarino. Okay, I think there are no other questions. So thank you for your participation. And I hope it helped you to get an impression how you can integrate configuration management tools in Ocarino. And then maybe you want to participate in the next webinar, which will take place in September with a focus on patch management, release management. And I think it will also include some possibilities on live kernel patching. So thank you and have a good day or evening, depending on where you're located.